Okay guys, well tonight I'm actually replacing the uh, AC compressor on my car. I've uh, already gone ahead and had uh, it's vacuumed out, sucked down. It's actually The system's in a vacuum right now, so I don't have to worry about letting refrigerant out in the air. And I went ahead and I already got the belt off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get the AC compressor, replace the AC compressor on a 2010 Toyota Corolla. Um, it's most of AC compressors are pretty much the same, but you know they're all a little different. You just got to figure out how to do it. I did go over to Firestone today, have them suck it down. You know it's the only legal way to do it. You can't let that stuff out in the air. It's a lot cheaper if you just do the labor yourself. Actually, I got the compressor for about two hundred dollars less than what it would have cost to have them buy the compressor. And then of course you know I'm saving probably at least an hour to two hours worth of labor time. So anyway. Sorry about the quality of the video right about now, but that's, you know, shit happens. So anyway, give me a second. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the top of the uh, engine compartment. Got the new compressor over there. So I got just got to get the old one out. You notice the belt's already off. And you can see this line runs down here and actually goes to the AC compressor. So we just got to get that out. There's four bolts that hold it on, get the lines off, a couple other things. Give me a second, I'll show you the view from underneath. See, when you get underneath here, you can really see this. So all you got to do is you got to take that, that nut, that bolt, there's one up top, another one here, and then, let's see if I can see it. Got to take these, this line, and the one right up here off. And she should come out. There's also an electrical connector that's right here that you unplug. I've already got it unplugged. You can see it right there. And uh, we'll do that. Give me a second. I'll get this all out. I'm not going to try to hold this camera and let and do this. But give me a second. I'll show you guys what happens after you get them out. All right. So you can see right here. That's the uh, AC clutch on the old AC compressor. And you look over here, and this is a brand new one. So what I got to do is just put this one in. But before that, we're going to have to put a few ounces of oil in here. It actually requires about two ounces of oil in the compressor. Um, I looked up the specs. You probably want to look up your own specs. Or if you really want to get creative, you can go ahead and you can dump all the oil out of here and see how much is in there. And then just replace the amount of oil that was in here into here but uh we're just going to put about two ounces of oil in here this system uses pag 46 oil in it i actually bought some of that so i can dump it in here and uh, then after we do that we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace the uh, o-rings in here i actually have new o-rings so it, it this actually came with two o-rings one goes one goes here one goes here we're going to actually replace them on the lines themselves, so we'll do that underneath. So you'll see how there's an O-ring here. And an O-ring here. And, uh, yeah, let me get a little tripod out here or something, and I'll show you how I replace these. They're actually fairly simple to do. Okay. So to get these off of here... I usually just use a pick, kind of go on the side of here, get up underneath here, pop it off. Comes off just slicker than snot. Then you want to uh, grab the next the O-ring that matches it. So they, you know this, these two match. This is the old one. Put just a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil on your finger, lube her up. Never stick. You never want to put anything rubber on dry. That's just asking for problems. And then you just kind of stretch it over here. Pops right into that groove. We'll do the same with this one. Make sure if you slip on there, you don't get your fingers. There's nothing more fun than having a pick go into your finger. 
get them nice and lubed up. So, you know, be careful of that. There we go. Got that, those on there. So, okay, so since I don't have anything that measures two ounces, what we're going to do, we're just going to pour a little bit of oil in here. And you probably should be more precise than this, but... At eight ounces of oil there, I put roughly a two ounces in there. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to spin this. Trying to get that oil in there. See, I'm spinning the whole clutch. You can kind of hear it. So we're just circulating that oil in there so that we know that it's there's oil in the system. Pour just a little bit down here. And that's it. So now we'll go ahead and we'll put this back up on in. We'll see how well you guys this turns out. So we just get the compressor in there, run one of your bolts in, kind of finger tied in there. Now when I took this compressor off, the uh, the nuts came off with the studs, so not too worried about that. It would have been nice if they the studs had stayed in there, because then I wouldn't have been having to hold anything. I could have just sat it in there, but you know, hey, it's auto repair, guys. Nothing ever happens. It's nice. Plug our wire back, wiring harness back on. And then we can plug our hoses back in. Of course. They only fit one way. Yeah. I love working my feel, but that's what you got to do with stuff like this, guys. These things don't have to be ultimately tight. Just snug it up so they're not coming apart. Notice I'm using quarter inch on everything. There we go. Now all we got to do is put the belt back on it, guys. So, you can see, poses are back on. Let's see if I can point this out. There we go. Maybe that's a little easier. 
Everything's tightened back up. I got all my bolts back on, everything plugged in. See that down here. All I gotta do is left is put the serpentine belt back on and tighten it up. So now all I gotta do is tighten up the belt, which involves tightening this guy up. Notice there was a shiny spot here and now it's not there so that's about close it's probably saved me quite a bit of money the air compressor cost me just under four hundred dollars off of carparts.com and uh, there'll be a link down in the notes for car parts you know they're actually pretty good they got some amazing deals I called around all the parts stores in town and the cheapest I could find a uh, compressor for was a remanufactured one for about 550 and this one was brand new Denso for under $400 which you know brand new versus rebuilt heh I know which I'm picking um, so since my system wasn't really low on refrigerant I'm assuming when when I take it back over to Firestone tomorrow and have them uh, refill it they're probably gonna charge me for maybe a tenth of a pound of Freon and then evac and recharge for the system which it's gonna be less than a hundred bucks man so all together I'm gonna have under five hundred dollars into this and I guarantee if I just taken it into any shop you're looking at about a seven eight hundred dollar charge minimum so you know fix your own cars guys it's actually pretty simple it's not hard even AC as long as you have somebody else with the right machinery to suck it down into a vacuum for you and then recycle it and recharge it for you you know it's really simple um, Little words of the wise, don't just let this stuff out in the air and then vacuum it out and fill it. It's not going to work. It's not right, and it's not healthy for the environment. Um, I could have easily bought, bought a vacuum pump and a set of AC gauges and filled this thing myself. But, you know, by the time I paid for that, I'm looking at over 100 bucks there. And I was bad on the, the uh, environment. So, you know, have it done right. You know, you guys can save yourself a lot of money find the parts yourself and putting them in so but anyway get over the blog I got plenty of articles on car repair camping guns and uh, have a great evening